By now, everyone has seen these Cadillac superchargers. They've flooded the market. They're all over. The problem is they only fit on Cadillacs. Until now, thanks to the guys at Mac Daddy Parts, they produce adapters and all kinds of ability goodness to allow us to install this Cadillac supercharger on an LS. The question is, do they work? In this video, we're gonna install this Cadillac supercharger on our 4.8 liter LS motor. But shh, don't tell the supercharger. It doesn't know. It's not on a Cadillac. It's different. It's got different port spacing. It's got an air to water air cooler. It's got a remote throttle, but it's got all kinds of craziness. Will they cooperate? Will they make power? Will they get along? We don't know, but one thing we know for sure, there will be boost. Before we could compare our supercharged combination to our naturally aspirated combination, we had to run our 4.8 liter in naturally aspirated trim. This combination was the same motor I've used for lots of stuff. It was a stock block, stock crank, Gen 4 rods, and JE Forge small dome pistons. It had about a half point higher compression than stock. 
It had a set of 706 heads that were all stock. They did have a valve spring upgrade. We had hardened push rods in it. If you watched the push rod video, this is the motor that we used to run that. We had stock rockers on here, the stock truck intake, stock truck throttle body, and a set of inch and seven eighths long tube headers with collector extensions. We ran all of this with the Holly HP management system. It has a Snake Eater Performance 1500 cc injectors in it. Not that the NA combination obviously needs that, but we wanted to have those in there so that we, when we ran boost on it, we had enough fuel flow, and when we ran E85, we would need even more, even though we weren't going to make a ton of power with any of these combinations, we wanted to make sure that we had enough fuel. So we ran this combination, naturally aspirated, and our little 4.8 produced 401 horsepower and 368 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we installed the supercharger using the adapters from Mac Daddy Parts. And we started off with a very conservative timing curve. What we did was we ran this thing on 91 octane pump gas. And as you can see from the curve here, we picked up a ton of torque. I mean, these were gains down low from 347 to 502 foot pounds. So we gained a ton of torque but the gains kind of level off out of the top. And the reason for that is that we had very little timing in this thing. We had about 10 degrees back here in the 3000 to 3500 range, 10 degrees of total timing. And then we only had about 15 degrees out here at the top. So run with this pump gas tune and only of about 15 degrees of total timing. This combination produced 487 horsepower and 512 foot pounds of torque on pump gas. But after running this, what we did was started turning the timing up like one degree at a time because we wanted it to be safe. Here's what happened when we ran it at 16 degrees. It produced 497 horsepower. Torque was about the same, 512 foot-pounds of torque. And then we added one more degree. That brought it up over 500, 503 horsepower and 514.6 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, as we were adding timing Eh, pretty normal. We increase the power output, but there's only so far that you can take this on pump gas. Now out here at the top of the RPM range, um, you're going to need more timing. In here near the torque peak at about 4,500 or 4,600 RPM, that's where you want to be concerned with your timing numbers. And down low here too, because there's a lot of load down here at 3,500 RPM with full boost. This is about 11 pounds of boost, slightly over 11 pounds of boost. So you want to be really careful with your timing down there. That's why we lead in with about 10 or 11 degrees of timing. And then we increase the amount of timing, especially after peak torque. So out here at the top of the RPM range, out near 6,000 RPM, we had about 16 or 17 degrees. And in part two, we're going to take a look at what happens when we step up to E85 and also what happens when we add extra timing after we add the E85. Okay guys, what do you think about the installation of our Cadillac Supercharger on our 4.8 meter LS? First of all, shout out to the guys at Mac Daddy Parts. This system worked great. I mean, all the stuff is chock full of ability goodness, but more important than that, I did like the way that it looked. More important than that, everything worked. It all bolted on, all the holes lined up. I could put the supercharger right on, all the bolts went in. They've scienced everything out. They have one of these kits running in a truck, so we know they work. But what about the power? There's more power to be had. This is only part one. I ran a pump gas tune on purpose. Guys always tell me in the comments, Richard, why don't you run pump gas? Why do you always run E85 or race gas? Why don't you run a pump gas? Everyone's running pump gas tunes. So I did a pump gas tune on this and not just any pump gas tune. I used the timing values that the guys from Mac Daddy Parts are running out on the street in their vehicle. So I simulated what they're doing, not just what we can get away with on the dyno, because it's colder in here, it's an optimized environment. I could run more timing even on pump gas, but I wanted to simulate what they're doing, so that's how much power they're probably making on pump gas. This is part one. In part two, I'm stepping things up. We're adding E85. I'm gonna run this timing level with E85 to show much just the E85 is worth. Then we're getting more spicy with the timing and adding even more power. On top of that, I also have throttle body tests. I've got the stock truck throttle body versus 102 millimeter throttle body. More air in, more power out, and I tested it at two power levels. As you can see from here, we've got stock exhaust manifolds. I tested stock exhaust manifolds versus long tube headers. Which one of those is worth more power, do you think? I've got lots of testing coming up. 
This is very cool. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up in parts two, three, and four. Keep watching.